and here they are as mentioned both italians both actually close friends so they know each other back and uh, with an 11 against a 12 giuseppe gets to start things off and what a better way than the italian renewed deck <laughs> we could say flow yeah. wonderies we haven't seen it the entire <laughs> weekend but here it is still with two Decks left in top 16 because there's another flow oh, oh, play and the dimension oh, shift oh. right on the bat. You want to have that versus Dragon Link, of course. Maybe one of the three most valuable cards in his main deck versus the Dragon Link strategy. Yeah, Gianluca is nodding and smiling. I bet he's not feeling like, like that inside at all. This is devastating for the Dragon Link strategy. We are also following this up by a pot of duality. Ooh, oh, Harpy's oh, Featherstorm! Harpy's, Harpy's Featherstorm! Feather but we're taking Aglin. This means that there is not really a play, no Rubina or anything on Giuseppe's I mean, side. So now we have to take plenty because, yeah, yeah, now there's uh, the map and the yeah. Aglin, so we can safely play. And I mean, if you already resolved Shifter, you don't really need that That's trap true. card anymore, I think. Absolutely, and uh, he just needed to pick up a monster, he did, and this will be a lot to deal with. I mean, the shifter alone is so annoying for Dragon Link to deal with. Uh, I don't even know what you can do against it, we oh. saw it. Yeah. I, I know something, because we okay. have looked into the side decks of the players already, and okay. even though this is game one, we can take it one step ahead. There is Artifact Lancea in Gianluca's deck. Okay, interesting one. Although, yeah, not uh, maybe not too useful during your own turn, but it's uh, definitely a way to also stop the Flowanderies because they need to be banished in order to recover. But this is stuff we have seen plenty of time in the past, uh, and yeah. yeah. So still in game number one, of course, we have searched ourselves the Empen, the boss monster of the Flowanderies archetype. It's crazy that we haven't featured this yet the entire weekend yeah. because there were so many flu players. As I said, still two of them left here in competition. That is actually equaling the number of Tielemans yep. players. So we had Tielemans versus Fluanderis in last year's final of YCS Dortmund, and it's still possible to happen again at this point. I want to see that. Honestly. That would be yeah. so insane. In. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So we are considering what to search out here with the Empen. It's going to most likely be the trap, and that is indeed what he decided on. Yeah. We are going to add that good old Dreaming Town. Yeah. Dreaming Town to our hand. And that's going to be not the only card we set to our back row. And back over to John Luca. This could be a quick one. If he doesn't have a way to fight against this shifter, is might just pick up his cars, but he's going to try his best to stay in this. Uh, and he starts things off okay with the Cypher. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. That Does Giuseppe just immediately want to maybe get this booked somehow? Oh, wait, no. But Dreaming Town would also not be able I to mean, hit the graveyard. This can trigger the map, first and yep. foremost. So oh, true. That not interested true. in going for that. Inch. Wow. I mean, him. probably he just does not want to play into Talents and Frost, I would assume. Yeah. So far, there's no need for that. That Striker Dragon is not doing a whole lot, to be honest, yeah. because uh, it is being negated by the Empen. So, so far, no real need for Giuseppe to do anything, really. I was wondering if he could have just waited this turn out, and if Giuseppe tries to OTK Gianluca, he still had Bistials to play with in the next turn. Okay, Regain is going to trigger, so we are giving Giuseppe that Dimension Shifter back into his deck, oh, and if he has another one, he might even yeah. be able to use it in this game. Yeah, but that's not the end of the world, because some of the Flowandry's combos can actually recycle it on top through the Ryza, so honestly, getting rid of it is actually better in this case for Gianluca, but... Yeah, it seems like uh, that might be it. And I think Leo was right. Uh, he could have just kept his cards and tried to just use the Siren here to survive. Uh, uh, this time around, not quite the okay, chance. Okay, look at that. We even don't decide to activate our trap card to have Norman summons on our yep. opponent's turn. So Giuseppe will just stick to normal summoning on his own turn instead. But let's see whether that's enough, whether that is going to be enough to end the game here this turn, because from time to time, Fluan the Reese can oh. struggle to do that. Oh, there is the Branded Beast for the map right away. And it's going to resolve. 
Now the first cards that are hitting the graveyard here after the Dimension Shifter. And Sironia will send another card to the graveyard, and it's going to be Magnamut, interestingly oh, enough. Oh, I like that a lot, because now when the Eglin comes down as a normal summon, you can special summon out the Magnamut from the graveyard, generating further resources. Also, Regain is pretty good against Fluwanderies, because you can just recycle their Fluwanderies that get that get banished. Yeah, indeed, that's true. So he wants to have access to Magnamut, and Giuseppe, I think, kind of has to hurry up with his uh, playstyle here, because if you give Dragonling too much time, if they can resolve Branded Regain too often, if they can resolve Magnamut too often, it's just it's going to be rough. And as soon as that Magnamut is in rotation, it's going to return, that's for sure. And as this card is using its effect more and more, it's going to be tough indeed. And that's exactly what's going to happen using the Regain on the Magnamut right here. Okay, so now we are going to form an interesting chain because, first of all, of course, the Eglin will resolve and then we will probably also want to normal summon something through that effect. And then at some point, Gianluca probably also wants to activate the Magnamut. Yeah, that will happen in a new chain and now we are adding the Eglin to hand. We are going to use the next normal summon. Are we just going to use a Robina to search for a Stree right here? Could be Probably. the case. He already has access to the Raidza, so he has that in hand already. So that's why we went for the other. Uh, but it's also nice because you probably can go for the continuous spell. I think it's it's a great way, not quite to OTK here, because obviously the map is gone. But that would have been the original plan, I assume. I mean, Stree is actually like really good. I really like yeah. the idea of Stree yeah. because you can then uh, get the Sarony out of the graveyard and then you will be able to just end this game without any more dark or light monsters hitting the graveyard and therefore potential bestials in the hand of Gianluca might be turned off by that. I mean if you break this field then there will be Striker Dragon Magna Boot in the graveyard. Okay. I mean if you go for Ryza maybe oh, not. That's true. But there first of all is going to be Ampen, Chainling 1 Ampen, Chainling 2 Aglin. And do we go for the continuous spell card that Michello was already seeing on the horizon yeah. here. Unexplored winds, uh, can't quite tell, but I'm pretty sure that's it. And since this turn he has not activated a card like you know, Prosperity or Extravagance, uh, he can go for the draw effect as well. That's true indeed. And yeah, I see Unexplored winds in his hand here. Oh, and he has the Stree, so Stree will just immediately resolve. Gianluca not even asking for a response window there. Maybe a little bit of a giveaway. And there now is though the chance for the Branded Regain to trigger, so you might as well draw into one of those. Interesting. Do you like actually going for the Saturn here? Instead, he could have gone for his own map and got that back with the Toucan, right? I think that also could have been a nice play. Oh yeah, good point. But, uh, I mean, the defense against possible bestials yeah. is also kind of nice. I However, really like that. Yeah, if you're breaking the field of Striker Dragon Magna, there will be Dark Monsters. In the but, way. I mean, there is the Reza in his hand, so I think there's never yeah. going to be any ladder Dark Monsters for uh, in the graveyard for the rest of the turn. And I think this game. is game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If we just get rid of Magna Mood and Striker Dragon, uh, oh, okay. okay. Looks like we don't want to do that, though. We put oh, that wow. onto the top of the wow. deck. Interesting approach there. Yeah, I also thought he was straight up going for game then, but I guess because he has already used the effect of map, but maybe yeah, it's not like he can use it again now. Well, I mean, what else can you get from this here? Okay, we are trying to draw two cards, successfully doing so. Those Flanderese monsters will go underneath the deck. The thing is, he did this play to guarantee that he would draw into the map back. Yeah, but l let me tell you... Oh, yeah. wait, we just go into the battle phase, so we don't try to end it here. I thought, hey, we still have that trap set, so we would have secured to have another normal summon through, uh, through the yeah. trap, but we just did not use it. Interesting. I mean, uh, Giuseppe definitely had the chance to close this one out, but I guess... If you risk it uh, this much now, yeah, the line has to adapt to whatever is there. And also, if you go for this line, I, I don't even know if I want to draw into the map, right? I would rather draw into different cards instead of the map, since we cannot use it this turn. So. I mean, it's good to have it face up on the field yeah. when your opponent tries to normal summon that on his turn. I think I like... Oh, but there is the that triple tactics thrust on top of that everything. That I find really interesting because yeah. before that, I mean, now he can get the Harpy's Featherstone, yeah. which is arguably the best card in the deck. Uh, fair enough. He could have activated that before and went for a big, an even bigger push, yeah. but... Uh, 
that works. But I mean, this is uh, good enough uh, and uh, RP Feather does. Yeah, I mean, RP Feather Storm is just such a strong card. Uh, there is not many outs to it with Red Rebute gone and uh, how can you even out it, I guess? It's pretty tough to play around it. So it's been popular lately as a one-off in decks because you can just go in first, set yeah. it through Turbo Tactics Frost. But Tazita uh, Giuseppe Tazitano decided that it's even powerful enough to play two copies of in the main deck. So he wants to hard draw it from time to time. He wants to set it for Frost. He just thinks this card, even going second, is good enough. Oh, look at that. That's the first monster effect already activated there by Gianluca. So we are holding the Feather Storm for now. Gianluca going to search for a Bistil here. I was going to say he might find a Drewsworm to defend him even further. However, Drewsworm can only yeah. send <laughs> special, special summon. Summon monsters, and there's not a lot of those in Fluoneries. I mean, even though it was already activated, it's still going to be negated by the Featherstorm, though. And therefore, we chain it to the Lubalion. Oh no, that is just a sad monster. Gianluca holding on to his last defense here. That is not only a sad monster, this is also a really sad monster. And now we are going to activate the trap Eglin normal summon. Can Eglin even still search something? It feels like he has all of the monsters in hand already. Magnamut is going to be summoned mm -hmm. again. Yeah, I think it should be a Mist Valley Apex Avian that's still in his deck, which would be a safe way to play I think through I a couple this of in things. The hand. Oh, okay, then maybe not even. He, uh, he declared the effect of it, yeah. so there should be something. But let's see. So that Magna would, of course, also not able to activate yep. this effect. But we can summon out the Lubellion, though. So we didn't go for the... Oh, we didn't even activate yeah. the Eglin. You were totally right. There was nothing he could have searched for the Eglin. We already have access to all the tribute monsters in our deck. So we cannot even continue to normal summon with that, though. And did we use Regain to shuffle something back this turn already? I don't think we did, no. Does it have to be a light or dark monster? Yeah, yeah, only okay. light or dark, yeah. Yeah, that would be <laughs> the best uh, Flo <laughs> uh, anti Flo Andres card otherwise, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I guess uh, Giuseppe kind of forgot about the absence of another tribute monster, but this is still perfectly fine. He has all the tools he needs to close this one out, uh, and uh, although it's obviously very tough to play on stream, let's not forget about that. A lot of emotion on the line and a huge crowd watching the game live. Totally. So. And for the third time now, Brennan Regained is used on the Magnet Wood. And there again, it will be able to activate this effect. And Gianluca is still hanging in here. And he also does not want to concede, which is actually something you really have to consider versus Flanderese. Because if you get into time trouble versus the deck that can just get itself 500 life points in the opening turn of a potential third game, then you might be in a pretty bad position. So. Interesting to see that Gianluca just holding on to this game here. He still sees a chance probably of winning it. Yeah, and here he forgot to resolve, you know, the Rubina first. So he should first add and then normal summon the Apex. Okay, oh. we're trying to okay. put that Lubellion face down. All right, all right. Which is arguably better for the Lubellion because it has 3,000 yeah, defense sure. and now you cannot out it anymore. However, we still have a normal normal summon left, the standard normal summon, and we're going for a street line now, which is going to be strong. And now we are getting rid of the Bistial Magna Mood. However, I can promise you if it wasn't used already and we have just missed that, this is going to go back into the deck again. Okay, so Tukan. And Gianluca stays so incredibly yeah. calm, right? Like, whenever Giuseppe is just uh, thinking about something for very long, then after a long time activating the chain links, Gianluca immediately says, yep, regain. He always knows when it's his turn to activate the effect. Very accomplished player. I saw Gianluca really being successful the last couple of weeks as well at regionals and OTS mm. championships, already grinding himself some World Championship qualifier points. So he's definitely on the radar. And now with this event, he probably will be committing to the grind even more after he's already in top 16 of the event here. Yep, that is going to be a lot of points, and this is certainly a player who can do it. For sure, absolutely. And again, an interesting line, but still uh, spinning back the rides, okay. Wow. Giuseppe, Giuseppe just does not want to end it here, right? He, yes. he, just, he just wants to play a little longer with his friend and teammate. Oh, Ooh, Gianluca oh no. Ash. He ashed the wins because he didn't want to get Harpy's Feather Stormed again. But the Pot of Duality follow-up is going to eventually get it to the hand of Giuseppe again. And he's just sitting there with seven cards in his hand. 
It's a lot, that's for sure. So we are once again entering the battle phase, and now Giuseppe yeah. realizes <laughs> oh, that no. this monster has 3,000 defense. I mean, sure, we can still activate the effect of Empen and just uh, make the Empen a little bigger, but still, that wasn't necessary, honestly. No. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, he could have just kept uh, his Ryza and other monsters around, but he wants to give his friend another draw. Yeah, for sure. Why not? Two more cards to the back row. We know one of them is going to be the second copy of Harpy's Feather Storm. So is Gianluca even going to be able to do a whole lot here on his next turn? It doesn't look like it, honestly. Is he going to draw into the e main deck evenly matched that can get him out of this situation? It won't even because there is the Mist Valley Epic's Aviator. Did we, did we resolve the card. Magna Mood, by the way? Uh, no. But we did activate it, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure we did, but we already drew for turn here for Gianluca, so maybe we should... Uh, Double check that because I am pretty sure that he did activate it there. And I mean, it's not there anymore, visible because it was shuffled back with the regain, so it's easy to forget. But I'm just uh, pretty, pretty certain that he did activate it. There now, he continues with the Saronir. And Featherstorm is going to be chained. Which is. I mean, fair, you want to stop the turn of your opponent as well again. Double Empen, Mist Valley Apex Avian, double Feather Storm now. So two times in a row, basically. Okay, so we are thinking this through now. I think they are now discussing yeah, the situation. Yeah, catching up on the Magnamut miss, uh, but... But I think they're both agreeing that the situation right now is correct. Okay, so maybe yeah. it was negated, maybe it didn't even activate it. Fair enough. Okay, so another set monster by Gianluca, and this time we use the... Dreaming Town to normal summon out the Robina. And three three as well. And back this tree. So we are slowly draining Gianluca out of resources. And I think at this point, concede, this is, it really looks like it's over. What does Gianluca have up his sleeve that he can still think uh, that he can pull this around? Yeah, he still is so calm, right? He doesn't yeah. even think about the time that is going down. He knows Dragon Link is the deck that he has been playing for the last couple of weeks and months. <laughs> he is completely trustful in his cards and he doesn't want to give up just yet. Yeah, he and once again he does this Feather Storm lock. And we are once again adding the Razor back to our hand instead of just going for a game here, setting up game. Now we have three incredibly big monsters. One set card, which might as well again be the Brand Regained. I do not know which other cards it could be. I think the Regained, uh, was it given back to hand? I mean, in that case, it would make sense. Okay, we're tributing the back row with oh, our Book continuous spell. And it would have been Book of Eclipse, which would have been nice, actually, if it would have been used in the battle phase. But that's not going to happen. Now we put that card back onto the top of the deck. Gianluca only sitting there with 3,100 attack points. Gords. Oh, okay, oh, that's Sarnia. similar to Gords, though. It's a monster that summons itself. Sarnia will throw himself into the way here. But we could even negate that with the... Apex Avian, and we will oh. still have game uh, on the field. Do you have to? We don't even need have to, it's still game, yeah. yeah. Oh, true, you're right. Yeah, you can just attack over it. That's why I actually would have liked the Apex to yeah. attack first, but I mean... Because if it's two bestials, then it's not game anymore. Yeah. Okay, so we get rid of that. We again attack with the Ampen, and... Okay, no, first of all, we are going to send that Magnamut back to the graveyard. And, and yeah. now we are picking up the cards, looking at the graveyard. Yes, That's Strike Attack goes back to the extra deck after a long grind game with so many Harpies Feather Storms, so many Risers that were just added back to the hand. Flewanderese succeeded. Yeah, now yeah. I again understand why we still have two Flewanderese players in the tournament, because yeah. that deck, if it goes first, how do you beat it even? Absolutely, yeah. and uh, yeah, there are back and forth game, and uh, there are games that just drag along for a bit, but although the outcome was always uh, on one side, and this was it, uh, Giuseppe convincingly starting, and the Featherstorm in the main deck are working out. Yeah, not only oh, Featherstorm, yeah. but I like Shifter a lot. This <laughs> card is absolutely fantastic uh, I'd say there. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so not, not yeah. that bad. Yeah. Shifter is a pretty good card, but uh, Leo was already getting a little ahead of himself talking about the side deck yeah. earlier yeah. on. But there, in fact, for Gianluca is now a card that would really go in versus Fluanda Rees. And it is an artifact Lancea. And not only that, but also Droll and Lockbird. So wow. he's prepared oh. for the Fluanda Rees matchup. Lightning Storms and Harpy's Feather Dusters. It doesn't even stop. Yeah. <laughs> wow. He is I mean, definitely. 
definitely seems in like there. he's side deck. He's pretty much built I mean, for that. He's Italian, so exactly. most of the time he's going to practice against other Fluanderies <laughs> players. True, true. Yeah, and as we mentioned, they are teammates indeed, and uh, most of uh, them did bring uh, the Fluanderies, so it makes sense. Of course. So tested against it, and now... And you're terribly afraid after that, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could hey. tell why, right? Because yeah. that game looked really like no fun for Gianluigi, because yeah. he was just setting monsters consistently with his Dragon Link strategy. If that's what his testing sessions were yeah. like, then of course I understand the those side cards. <laughs> totally, and uh, I would say that will change uh, significantly the outcome of this game with Gianluca, first of all, going first and trying to set up his combos. But let's take a look at Giuseppe. He's the yeah. same. And there is a pretty interesting decision because Giuseppe is playing Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries in the side deck, wow. which sounds good. There is so many different decks, but while browsing through his extra deck, there is not a single card he could bring in against the Dragon Link matchup. Aww. But he respects the Salomon Grid. Yeah, and also he respects the Junk deck because there's Junk Speeder in there <laughs> instead of a card for Dragon Link, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that is true, but what do you really want to take out against Dragon Link? It's tough. The card itself is just not that great versus Dragon Link because they have so many different ways and tools yeah. to play their turn out, yeah. For it's sure. just a minus one, basically. I mean, you're getting rid of Striker Dragon, maybe, so the Boot Sector Launch can't be accessed. This or Romulus, if, maybe. Yeah, if but the deck yeah. has a good start, then it's still going to pop off, right? Yeah, and I also feel like, uh, do you really, are you afraid of the monsters if you're playing for one reason in this matchup? I feel like, uh, you know, Branded Beast and Regained are probably scarier, so yeah. you want to get yeah. rid of those maybe with Cosmic and cards like that, I would say. So. For to sure. be fair, like, Heretic Spheres doesn't do that much against Flu Wanderers, so, yeah, you know? Yeah, I do definitely agree, but we're going to get a couple of answers to all of those questions because players once again are ready. Game number two on our hands, so let's get back into the playing action. Marcello was talking about the Cosmic Cyclone earlier. I really want to see this one-off Cosmic Cyclone and the main deck. <laughs> okay. All and right. Here it is. I see already a controversial card in Giuseppe Zen being the Apex Sabian. Usually you tend to side out that going second, I would Ooh, say. That, that may be the best yeah. normal summon that the Dragon Link deck currently has to offer. And it is going to be a Black Metal Dragon. And that immediately turns into a Striker Dragon. Getting Gianluca two searches at once, it's going to be Boot Sector launch and also the almighty Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. Does he play the big Red Eyes package? I don't think so, no. I only see the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon That here. is really unfortunate because I love seeing a driver being sent to the graveyard from the deck with Meteorite Dragon. Yeah, that's a cool tool for sure. But where are we going next? We already have access to like a small combo here. So, there is the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. Dragon Ravine was hard drawn, so we are not going to get into our Rami list here anymore. But we discard the 1 for 1. 1 for 1, just a card that actually gives you access to the Black Metal Dragon even more consistently. Yeah. But you already had it, so you can even discard it yeah. here for the Dragon Ravine. Why not? Why not? Uh, and uh, now we can pretty much set up what we talked about previously, so you want to get some of these branded Pelon Traps uh, as well as the Euratic Sphere and basically call this a grind game, I would say. But uh, against Flo Wanderies, does that work? Does that get you there? I'm not sure. We will see. Branded Beast here, the card of his choice to activate over the branded Regained, linking off both of the Black Metal Dragon and the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon into... Oh no, it was Volubali instead. Into the oh, Seals, and that's, that's all it. it is! We are just going Seals, Branded Oof. Beast Pass, Ooh. but there is the beautiful, beloved by Leonard Koenig, Artifact Lancea. You saw it even before the game started, and here it is in game number two of Top 16. Oh, I love this card so much. It was absolutely fun to play against when I was playing Orchest. <laughs> oh, and we are, of course, chaining to the activation of Artifact Lancea to at least get the search off here with our quick spell, the Fluan de Ries Why and not? the Advent of Adventure. Still, though, like, Artifact Lancea just makes all of your Fluan de monsters go to the graveyard instead of being yeah. banished, and that just hurts yeah. your resource game so much. Also, I think I see there's a duality in his hand, and yeah. I saw the field spell too, and the field spell is just not going to be too great either. It was five spells and the Apex, so... Definitely uh, an interesting end, and he's now gonna be forced to fetch for some answers. 
What is it going to be? Duality, first of all. Okay, that can still resolve. Stri, Ampen. That's okay. Almost just oh, Engine. The Ash Blossom is really strong, though. If you have Engine, and we know that he has Rubina against this field, it's really, really strong. The Heretic Seal does not hurt you too much, but there is Branded Beast, so you can Ash the Seal effect in the yeah. graveyard so that your opponent cannot get to the Magna Mood, gain further resources, and get the pop from the Branded Beast. I yeah. really like the Ash here, yeah. The Ash looks amazing, honestly, because Gianluca had a very, very min minimalistic turn. He didn't do a whole lot. So yep. I think he doesn't Ooh. have a lot of oh, oh, access oh. to engine even. Have you seen the other card in his hand? Lightning Storm? Ooh. Really? So yes. we can take care wow. of the monster and oh. the back row. That's really nice. Yeah, that's huge. There it is. Wow. And Gianluca does not look too happy about that. He had the Lancea, I felt pretty good about, about that, but now he also knows that there is the Ash Blossom. What are you going to do here? What is your win condition if you're Gianluca? Okay, we are chaining, trying to bounce the yeah. Rubina to hand. Oh, that Usually we get banished, but with the Lancea it's still going to yeah. go back to hand for this one <laughs> unique scenario, we'd say. Indeed it is. So Giuseppe now still resolving that Rubina. And the thing is now we are going to normal summon, activating the effect of Aglan most likely on normal summon. Then, oh wait, is yeah. seals not mandatory? I think yeah. seals might be chaining one here, right? No, 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 no. The effect to summon is not. Let's double check. So, da -da -da -da. if this card is tributed, it? it is indeed mandatory. It is. Really? Yeah, it oh, is wow. mandatory. Wow. Therefore, um, then you cannot wait, activate wait, the effect of Aglan then. Oh, yeah. Because it says, if this card is tributed, special summon one dragon monster. There is no you can. All right. This is chain link one, and Eglin is not chain link two. You couldn't use it anyways, because the Rubina was sent to hand. So I guess that's why we're using Ash Blossom here. Yeah. And then we activate... So he didn't use it, yeah. Yeah, yeah he just did not use it. And it goes over to Gianluca. And Ooh. if he finds good engine here, I think there is a way for him to still hang in this game. There is a Rubina in hand against a map, so that basically means that if you normal summon something as Gianluca, you are in a bit of trouble, because then you're still going to see either an Eglin or maybe a Razor on your own turn. Oh, he and just he passed back! back. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wow. Gianluca just not summoning dragons, and Giuseppe about to let some more birds fly. He reveals the Rubina for the map. That is not what you're supposed to do in dragons. Very unfortunate. Uh, it seemed like he was the one preparing for the matchup, but in the end, uh, yeah. this lightning storm really caught him in. Oh. Uh, yeah, impermanence is okay, but not enough to stop this. Yeah, because we can still resolve yep. the Eglin, and Eglin will lead us to Ampen, and that's very promising here in this very simple game state that we find ourselves in right now. Double checking on the graveyard. Yes, there is a Lubellion as a resource, but we'll have to get a big dragon onto the field first of all for that to matter. So, what's next? I think the cards in hand for Gianluca are the one boot sector launch, which we which we searched with the striker dragon, and, and then an another Ash. unknown card. It looked like Ash, though, you're right. So that might be really difficult now for Gianluca because he has to get the rocket cards into the graveyard or just find something completely different. I think Collapse Serpent or Wyvern Buster could be really strong right here. And there he is, the Empen, the big old boss monster of the Fluwanderies. Yep, that is going to resolve. We are chain blocking Ash here by using Chainlink 1 Amp and Chainlink 2, our little bird in the banished pile. Grabbing ourselves another card and there is still prosperity in the hand of Giuseppe, yep. which is Pretty, pretty strong because we might as well get ourselves another Ash Blossom or something. Mm -hmm. Wants to push some damage first, it seems, and then activate it. This way it maximizes its damage, but definitely a commanding uh, position at the moment. Wow. So this is already 3,500 damage on the field. I just want to mention that here. But uh, Giuseppe showed in the previous game that he's not the guy to OTK. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely not. He's taking the safe approach, and I mean, so far it's totally Spatial. working out. He won game one, he is now also in a very good position here in game yeah. number two, so I would assume that he can just continue doing what he is doing the entire day, the entire weekend, and maybe he's on his way to be our YCS Dortmund champion here. Wow, okay. We're going to give up our Ampen here for the Razor, interestingly enough. 
And we can only tribute one monster for Razor. I think if it is a tribute monster, yeah. right? But it has to be like wind or uh, water, I think. <laughs> We're bouncing all of it. Look, Giuseppe just does not want to attack. He just bounced all of his cards back to the hand or back to the deck. He just loves to do that. I have a really good deck for Giuseppe. It's called Runic. <laughs> And you would never have to enter a battle phase again. Oh, look at that. I think Ash Blossom just shuts down so many cards that Gianluca could pick up yeah. here. And therefore, we are picking exactly that card to prevent further damage that Gianluca even has in mind. Wow. Did we even attack? No. Nope. No. <laughs> Interestingly enough, <laughs> we just don't want to deal damage here, I guess. And there I is mean. another pass. Gianluca can just happily pass again because he knows Giuseppe is <laughs> not going to attack him at all. Yeah, he's no fear. Yeah. <laughs> He just wants to pass it back over, and now in the main phase of Gianluca still, we are going to normal summon out the Robina through the effect of our trap once more. And we're double-checking on our banished cards. Chaining one Robina, chaining two Aglim, the classic. I think we can now add a Toucan that can also... Okay, we're going for three. Of course, also taking resources from our opponent. I was just thinking you could also go for an Apex Avian attack. Yeah, that's true, but I, I'm not even sure whether we even still have uh, the good old Tukat in our hand already. Oh. And also, can Tukat even add back Apex? Oh, I think it's yeah, just, no. just one race, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Makes sense, because you can also add back the spell I mean, card. It's pretty much a Flo card. Yeah, we can agree with exactly. that. It's adopted. It's totally yeah. adopted, for sure. Oh, and there's the wow. handshake. Gianluca knows this is going to take a while. There's not going to be a battle phase here. Giuseppe is just advancing to top eight right now, completely dominating the Dragons with his little birdie strategy. Absolutely. Bittersweet ending, we could say. It's always mixed feelings when you win against a friend. But, I mean, one of them had to be knocked out. Yeah. And uh, Giuseppe is now advancing to the top eight. Impressive stuff. Italians and their Fluanda restack. They yes. cannot stop. They won't stop. They're all the way into top eight here of the tournament. Marcello, how do you feel as a representative of the country here <laughs> with the Fluanda Reese players? I be prouder. And, uh, I mean, unfortunately, as we saw in the first section of the bracket for top yeah. 16, we had four Italians, which means that Giuseppe is now going to face, I guess, it's, uh, the winner of the other Italian match. Between them, there was also the Italian national champion, Lorenzo Muselli, oh, so yeah. we'll see. But regardless, I'm happy that in top four we'll get at least one Italian. It's a shame that they have to play against uh, each other all the way up, but it was a great match nonetheless. Uh, and uh, yeah, if any of us doubted it, we haven't seen Fluanderis all weekend, but it's here to stay, I think. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. His opponent was not allowed to play at all. Yeah, and I have some live updates for you because I know you guys at home, you cannot see the other matches, but I have some live infos here. And you were talking about Mr. Lorenzo Morzelli. He's going to be in top eight, Ooh. and therefore he's going to be still in competition in this one. Also, you remember Julius Schwarzkopf from last round's feature match? Yep. Rika also still going strong, also in top eight, being in there pretty, pretty good. And then one big name, maybe the biggest name left in competition, has been knocked out. Wow. Jesse, Jesse Cotton, Cotton has fallen to Zofian Belkacem, Ooh. so he's still going strong with his yeah. branded deck there. Really, really, really cool stuff. And then, maybe now, the biggest name left in competition, almost making worlds this season, Gabriel Nats is still left in there too. Is he still playing or did he win? He is in top eight officially. Wow. Okay. So, Great Nets match. and Muzelli are my two favorite picks for this time. Really? I have to say. I mean, it's easy to say now that we know that they're <laughs> I knew one. this from the start. <laughs> sure, <laughs> I sure, said, sure. I said Nets Obviously, this uh, weekend a lot. Busty can prove this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, he's Busty. a very likable yeah. guy. I like him as well. He's a great pick to win the tournament. Of course, also because he's running like one of the... Yeah best performing decks of the tournament with the Tielemann strategy, right? Yeah, absolutely. So that might mean that we could see, since they are, I think, in opposite side of the bracket, they are. we could get the, you know, Giuseppe yeah. against Gabriel final of Tier against Flu, and yeah, yeah that got to be my hope as well. I want to see that run back after oh, a year. Yeah. But yeah, as we mentioned, it was a, a long, a long tournament, uh, great names, can't wait for more. We have three more matches remaining for the day. So guys, you really don't want to miss on this one out. Uh, but again, uh, if you have uh, any preferences, feel free also to drop out. What are your picks for who do you think is going to win the event? Uh, what deck, what player? Still, it seems like we'll have a very diverse top eight, it yes, seems. For sure, so many different decks for top 16, but the match is not over yet. We, for example, also still had Vanquish Soul in competition. Yes. That might have made its way into top eight, which would be really cool and something to look out for. And funnily enough, 
we know Pearly was quite strong yeah. and quite well represented at the beginning of the tournament. There's zero pure Pearly decks in top 16, but there's one Pearly Sprite. I don't know whether he has won or lost yet, but maybe that's something to watch out for too. I mean, this is a crazy spicy deck, but in the end, we were talking about Vanquistal earlier, there can only be one oh. winner. And now we are going to talk to our winner of the top 16 feature match at Take It Away. Thank you very much, Leo. Yes, I am here with our top 16 feature match winner, Giuseppe, who has just advanced into the top eight of YCS Dortmund 2023. Giuseppe, how are you feeling? You did just have to beat a teammate to get here. Does it feel bittersweet? Yeah, of course, uh, I prefer to go against uh, not my, my teammate. I mean, yeah, uh, it's unbelievable because I didn't expect to reach uh, this... Um, um, this results, I mean, yeah. Also because my teammate is very, very strong. Gianluca is very, very strong. And uh, of course, uh, it's not an easy game with him. So, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I feel very good now. <laughs> Don't worry, I mean, we're going to have to do this quick fire interview with the top eight very soon. Obviously, we'll speak to you again very shortly. But let's just quickly go through that game because the first game went on for quite a while. Obviously, you played the Dimension Shifter and M Pen, which is quite a difficult feel for someone to out. Then the whole D Shifter being sent back and things, so he was able to play. We were wondering why didn't you go for game earlier? Because there seemed like a couple of points during game one where you could have attacked for game, but you kept just playing it out and making sure that you were in control. What was going through your mind? Um, I was afraid that to don't close the game because he plays the bestials. So at some point, uh, if I would could have, uh, if he could have done a bestial, maybe I couldn't close the game uh, and lose my advantage. But I keep the game in my advantage, and uh, the result uh, after turn after turn, a uh, Flander is uh, a strong deck uh, when uh, the turn passes. And then when we got into game two, obviously Gianluca started with Heretic Seal and Branded Beast had things in hand, but you lightning stormed that back row and then Ash the Heretic Seal as well. And then he ended up passing on his turn. Now we're assuming that was maybe not to activate the normal summon effects. When those are happening, do you feel like you already have the win secured or are you having to still play quite carefully? Um, I just... Um, my opponent did the Lancia, so I couldn't play in that game. So I just uh, taking my Robina, use my field spell, and then uh, waiting uh, his responses. When I see that he bricked because uh, he didn't play, I started to use Ryza to gain an additional turn after that. And in fact, the turn after, I had all the Flanders in play, and then I, I could win. And you win, you did. Here you are now going into that top eight. Do you think you can take it all the way to the final? I, I play game after game as my teammate Diego reached me. So game after game without thinking about what if I lose, what if I win. So. I'd say getting into the top eight is still a great achievement. So I hope that you just carry on with that attitude, that calm thing of just, I'll take every game moment by moment. Congratulations. We're going to be speaking to you again very, very shortly, along with the seven other competitors in our top eight cut here at YCS Dortmund. Don't go anywhere. That's coming up very soon.